Hi, welcome to the EDK Rock and Metal channel. My name is Kirk Horton, and today I've got two special guests from a legendary band from the Sheffield metallic hardcore scene. I'm talking about the band Rough Justice, and I've got James Tippett, who's the vocalist and screamer in chief, and Elliot Reynolds, who's <laughs> one of the, I was going to say six stringers in the band, but for all I know, you could be playing a seven string guitar. <laughs> but Elliot is a guitarist, and we're going to be talking about the debut album. Faith in Vain, which came out on the 12th of January. So before we get into it, I would just like to find out, you guys, what have you been up to this week? Uh, how's, how's your week been so far? Yeah, good, thank you. Yeah, pretty busy. Um, we've got tour coming up uh, in just over a week now. So lots of last bits of prep for that. But yeah, just working uh, up until then. Yeah. Yeah, same with me, bro. Just working. Um, yeah, constantly doing something. So <laughs> yeah, always on something. Good to hear. Well, the first question, I'm going to ask this really as somebody who's relatively new to the band. You've been around since what? Two, is it 2011 when you first formed? Yeah, say so. 2011. So why has it taken over a decade to finally release your debut album? And this won't be the last time you get this question. <laughs> uh, yeah, million dollar question. No, I, I don't know. I, I think we've we've kind of spoke about this briefly on like, other interviews and stuff that we've done like since the record's released and stuff. But... I think it's a mixture of factors, I think. Um, but the main thing is, is this whole thing is just about fun for us. And I think putting time pressures on ourselves would kind of take the fun out of it, basically, for us. Um, we've always been working full time, pretty much, or studying when we've been in the band as well. So touring hasn't been kind of the easiest thing for us to do. Um, so I guess whenever we do get to write together, it's like in quite big like bursts I guess you know we sort of get together and have that creative creativity sort of come out all at once but I don't know what do you think Earl is there any other reasons for I, these I, <laughs> gaps? Think that, I, I think that there was never any sort of goals or anything yeah. was there that's part think, of it as well yeah we just um we just wanted to continue to do what we've always done and just and that's just like write some riffs together play some shows and that's really it. So yeah. like it went through a while of, I mean, like for a long time, it was just like, if we, if we, if we weren't playing a show, like we might not have necessarily like had a band practice or whatever. We might've sent each other some riffs and stuff, but it wasn't, it's definitely a different entity now, isn't it? I think that um, yeah. we, we, we just, we just didn't want it to be anything in particular. It just was what it was, I think. And, and that's something I really like about it, I think, is that it's just super organic and it's just whatever it is, you know. We've never decided it for it to be anything, really. Yeah. You know, I was watching a documentary about the Sisters of Mercy. And oh, yeah. Apparently their aim, when they formed, was to be played on the John Peel show once. That was just <laughs> like they, they, they had one aim. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't even know if we had like that singular aim. Even really, I guess it was just to, to play a gig, and we did. It was, that, yeah, it was like, it. <laughs> yeah. I think we kept doing it. Might, might have even been just like to record some songs, and you're like, oh, buzzing, we've done it. <laughs> you yeah. Know? And then, then, it's, then it's like the next thing is like, oh, maybe we could do like some gigs, and you yeah. know, just kind Anything of anything else was a bonus after that. Oh I think, yeah, it, really. So, yeah, and that's it. And I think, yeah, yeah, it's good. <laughs> So are you all are you all from Sheffield? Because I know you said studies there. Maybe some of you might from other parts of the country. Yeah, all, all Sheffield born and bred. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. All, every single one of us. So one of, one of the things that I'm I'm intrigued by, you've been described as Sheffield S8 underground veterans. What is the significance of the S8 postcode in the city of Sheffield? <laughs> Go on, James. Uh, well, um, I think four out of five of us are from that area. Um, and it's quite a it's quite a big area of Sheffield. It's um, sort of Sheffield's not a big place. I don't know if you know it very well. It's it's it, you know quite a big population, but pretty small city centre. And it's got these sort of series of villages, almost big sort of suburbs outside of it. And Sheffield Eight's one of those. Um, so four out of five of us come from that area, um, and we've just got you know very fortunate to have a big group of friends that are from that area that we're all still really really close. Um, and it's just a really nice part of the city as well. We're quite like just loud and proud about it, really. You know, it's something that we're all very, um, I don't know, we have a big attachment to it because it's home, I guess, is, is the main thing. Yeah. 
It's just gangs, really. That's all it is. <laughs> well, like, is it is it Parsons Cross? Someone was telling me that's like the rough area, isn't it? Uh, that's one of them. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, yeah. That's sort of like the other end to us, really. We're, we're sort of Sheffield. It's kind of like the south side of Sheffield, I guess. Sort of right. south to south east. I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, th- th- that again, that's an area of Sheffield. I don't know super super well, but yeah, it's uh, it's not meant to be the best up there. But who knows? Don't know it well. Do you know? Do you know about? Sheffield Pulse Metal Trio Goza. Are you familiar with them? Yeah, yeah. yeah good friends of ours. Yeah, yeah Kez is, it, is, it, is a good guy. Yeah. Is it, one of them's from, is it Is it Dronefield? Oh, yeah. That's oh, not too yeah, far from us. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No yeah. Dronefield as well. Because you're on the borders, though, aren't you, with Derbyshire? That's yeah. right. As soon as you go into Dronefield, you technically classed as Derbyshire, I think, isn't it? And Chesterfield, maybe. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. 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 The, the bit of like Sheffield 8 where me and Elliot are from in particular is like right on the cusp of that, really. So yeah. we're, we're kind of as south southerly as you can get in Yorkshire, really, <laughs> before getting to Derbyshire. So, yeah. oh, is it, I think I mispronounced it. So I said Dronfield. Is it Dronfield? Dronfield. Yeah. It is yeah. Dronfield, right. Okay. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, the top top band goes there. Um, so what bands influence you? when you first started? Because now you've said four out of five of you from the same area. What were you yeah. listening to when you formed the band? Um, uh, so R- Rough Justice was started just me and Ed. Um, and it was kind of, yeah, 2010, 2011, we started getting ideas together for the band. And it had a very clear set of influences. It was like, we were really just sort of getting into hardcore properly um, at that time. And we found um, a lot of like the sort of, East Coast hardcore bands at the time that we were really into. So the two that we normally say and sort of spoke about a lot before is a band called Dead End Path um, and one called Bad Seed, who are both coincidentally kind of from the same town in northeast Pennsylvania. Um, but at the time we were getting into it, it was like Reaper Records as well was a big thing at the time. So that was the label that Trapped Under Ice put out a couple of records on. Um, and like the Richmond, Virginia scene was pretty big. But um, for, for like locally, it was, uh, I remember a big one for us was While She Sleeps, obviously, um, and Malevolence. Um, and uh, our friends played in a band called uh, Never Cry Wolf. Um, <laughs> quite a bit, yeah. Um, so they were good friends of ours. They went to the same school as us as well. So like, we really, you know, kind of saw that they were playing gigs. We were a bit like, oh, you know, this, this looks cool. Let's, you know, want a piece of that or whatever. Um, but then got to see a lot of like really cool UK hardcore bands um, play Sheffield quite a lot. As we were getting into it, like Broken Teeth um, and Deal With It. Yeah, uh, Deal With It. Split Case, we're a band from Nottingham who we all really loved a lot. Um, we played our first show with a band called Think Twice who were from Nottingham as well. So it's 2011, I feel up to like, you know, well, up till now, I guess, but I feel like that was a really big sort of time for a lot of cool bands in uh, UK hardcore. Um, but yeah, we had really, we were just very lucky, sort of right time, right place for it, I guess. How do- that's that's fascinating isn't it not many bands have got your backstory like from the 1990s i can remember one of one band that was unique because they'd all grown up together was the manic street preachers mm, and yeah. they used to talk up the virtues of that didn't they they used to say like unlike every other band who met in a melody maker ad or enemy you know we grew up together and played in the same primary school football team yeah. was it yeah. like that with some of you then like in the same cricket and football team as well yeah yeah pretty much I mean, me and James have known each other since we were four years old. So we, like before I learned guitar, we actually shared a drum lesson, I think. That was both uh, our first like, intros to music pretty much, weren't it? Yeah. So we shared a drum lesson and then they had a few of them and then I and then I chose guitar to pick up instead and then that were it. And we've been playing in bands ever since, like since year six, year five, I think. And yeah. uh you know, played football together and all that stuff. And so, yeah, it's very much like that, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And then Ed went to the same school. He was in the same school year as I was at the same school. And Harry, who plays bass, is two years older than us at the same school. And then obviously we met Josh, who is the same year as me and Elliot and Ed. Obviously went to a different school. He's the one who doesn't come from the same area. But obviously we, you know, we used to practice in one of the bands we were in, in the same building as Malevolence. And that's kind of how we met him and those guys as well. So. Um, yeah, all happened very naturally. We're all very, very close. You know, like we were saying earlier, the re- I think the reason there's been we've been going for so long is just it's always an excuse just to hang out with each other, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're like, oh, we're gonna have a band practice, buzzing, sound. Uh, yeah, yeah. We always used to say Josh was an honorary member of S8 because he spent yeah. that much time. <laughs> 
just hanging out. Yeah. <laughs> what consideration did you give to using that as the band name at the beginning, S8? <laughs> <laughs> Would have been good, to be fair. I I've been trying to figure out how to get it into a song name. <laughs> That's been one of my little projects. Oh. To yeah, for the, for the last my dad, weeks. my dad were on about making a fucking cafe, weren't he? Once, well, he weren't actually going to do it, but going to call it S and then A T E. A T E, yeah, very good. Which is pretty I funny. About that. It's a great idea. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't actually going to open one, but I th you know, it, you just wouldn't shut up about this idea. Yeah, <laughs> brilliant. So funny. let's talk about the debut album then, uh, Faith in Vain. My first question, because I've gone through your back catalogue. So what reservations did you have about including the three songs Overruled, Boa Constrictor and Mind's Eye on this album, considering they've been around, haven't they, since 2012? Mm. Um... Kick us off, James. <laughs> I, I don't know if we had any reservations necessarily. It was... No, yeah. It, it was one of those where we knew that this record because of like the gaps in releases that we've had as you've mentioned i think we knew that this record was going to be the first thing so many people heard from us and i think having those three older songs on there was kind of a bit of a, you know we, we, we sort of thought that it would be nice to include those because we played them for such a long time that they have changed quite a bit as well the songs um and they've never been on streaming as well i guess was like a factor you know um the EP that we did in 2019, that was the first thing that we'd had on streaming services. It would only been like, you know, on Bandcamp or whatever before. Um, so not so much reservations. I, I don't know. I, I think it was it was not a selfish thing, but it was for us to get those on the record. I think I think we all felt it was right. Um, I think at one point, like, because we weren't sure whether to include them initially, I think. The, the, there like, was a conversation at first. Yeah, yeah we weren't too I sure. Think, and I think that you know, like Malev in particular, or, you know, were like, what? You've got to redo those. Like, that's a given. And we were like, oh, what, really? Like, the kind of old or whatever. Um, but I think the more we thought about it, it just made sense to uh, to put them on there and sort of, and that and that's why I like it as a whole. It's like quite a nice body of work that spans over a good few years and gives yeah. a good sort of um, look into what we're about, really. And, yeah, you know, I think it's just quite a nice nod to our, history as a band i guess um and obviously yeah. to, to people who don't haven't heard those songs before they are new i guess um yeah. but then to the people that do know us we've had a lot of people say you know like oh my god i can't believe like you've re-recorded that song that you've been playing for all this time and i've never been yeah. able to stream properly and stuff which has been quite nice so i guess it's yeah. nice way of like tying off that kind of era as well and sort of like you know, moving on to the next thing you know, i agree and it'll be and, mm. yeah. yeah i mean it, to me it was it's it's not a problem because it's the first time I've heard you recorded material, you know, on this album. So it's only yeah. when I was looking through it, I was like, oh, this was on your 2012 demo. This was on, yeah. on EP. But yeah, it's had, you, you just said there, they, they've evolved anyway. So that leads on to my next question. How do you think the Rough Justice sound has evolved from day one to where you are now? Um, I think it's probably got a little bit more metal in it now. Uh, I think initially it was, correct me if I'm wrong, James, but just straight up hardcore band in it. It was almost like just wanted to sound like the bands that, you know, you, you loved and stuff like that. And I think that obviously as we've matured, the sound has matured and, um, and what we like has sort of found a way to seep into the sound, um, which has been really cool. Um, but yeah, yeah, I guess like, metallic elements i think and stuff like that and a lot of people are referred to it as melodic which is quite interesting because i never really thought as of, of us as quite uh, that that much of a melodic band but you know there's some melodies in there when when i actually think about it um so yeah 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 I, 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 you, that's what i was going to say as well like what we kind of listen to has like el said i was going to use those that words has seeped into what we've what we've doing now i think and i, I always think the cool thing about what we do and how we write music is that there's never or very rarely conversations about we want to do a bit like this or we want to sound a bit more like this or whatever and I think that's just happened so naturally over the years because we've been together for so long and writing music together for so long it just happens so naturally and it's evolved 
into something of its own. I feel like you know, I, 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 I think yeah. we all have a really good idea of what Rough Justice sounds like and what our songs should be and stuff like that. And you know, like Faith in Vain, for example, the title track with like the chorus and stuff on it, you know, might seem different to it is different to the rest of the tracks on the album but like coming up with the idea of it, it didn't seem like a leap for us or anything you know it seemed quite natural and stuff no, so that, it was a new things yeah it didn't really seem like oh do we really want to put a chorus out there you know it was just yeah. like yeah that's cool Onto sounds sick <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, that's fucking right good that mate yeah yeah actually it's, it's interesting you mentioned the title track track number three I picked up on that when I reviewed it for Screen Blast Repeat. The chorus, th there's not another song like it. And there's also, do you know what the intro reminded me of? That legendary metal band, Queensryche. There's like this clean guitar arpeggio at the beginning. It's really, nice. oh, really? Yeah. quite mystical. I was like, whoa. This oh, is no, nice. I'll, take I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, can I just ask about that chorus, James? Yeah. It's... um. Are you doing the backing vocals as well? Because there's actually harmonies to that, aren't there? The chorus. There's a lead voice. Yeah, so, so, so Ed, uh, who plays the guitar, he is singing. He's the one singing it. Um, I think it's all his vocals, all the clean stuff is him. Um, I'm just doing that sort of like, you know, um, that other bit underneath it that you can hear. Um, uh, yeah, uh, the, the harsher bit that you can hear yeah. um, in the chorus. But yeah, it's, it's all him. Um, yeah. Yeah, it does, it, it, it's just something a bit different, isn't it? Um, and Elliot, what I will say as well, I think the guitar playing is, I think, I don't know if many people picked something, it's quite technical. There's some really interesting discordant shapes that you're playing there on your fretboard. And there's a song on there where it feels like the guitar is hissing at you. There's one playing this like doom riff and then the other guitar in like a call and response. Sweet. Yeah, back at it. yeah no, it's nice to hear like, someone pick up on stuff like that or notice it um you know notice specific things about that you know it's, it's nice to uh it's nice to hear because sometimes it's a conscious effort and sometimes it just happens and then afterwards you sit with it and you're like oh there there's these certain elements to the sound that we didn't necessarily mean to include but kind of you know ended up being what it is so it's you know it's interesting to hear your take on it and the uh, what what you hear and stuff is yeah it's really cool yeah that that song i'm referring to um your is uh let's have a look when it comes that really stood out for me that that song yeah we like um, that one a lot. yeah but like the, the, the panned bit yeah oh it's yeah. so heavy as well isn't it yeah real heavy <laughs> yeah yeah we really like that one i think we, we've always liked that one um but i think that sort of as we started to play it more at practice and stuff and like now the record's out i think it's quickly become a favorite of all of us uh just because of how like fucking heavy it is and and uh it just doesn't really give up really it's just heavy from the start and then every bit after is heavier if not as heavy so you yeah. know they're not just and, as heavy even. And, and james from a vocalist point of view that really does encourage you to be as vitriolic as possible doesn't it yeah yeah um, I, I i can't wait to play that one live um so yeah. a lot of a lot of these songs we've never played i think backwards mask is the only one we played live obviously apart from the three older ones but uh, of the new trunk tracks on the record um Fuck, i've not even thought about that yeah yeah it's crazy isn't it so um yeah next <laughs> gotta, week we'll gotta remember, we've got to actually time. get up to standard now like yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah let's learn them yeah but it's um yeah i, I think that's one thing I'm going to have to try and pace myself on this tour is not to go to, you know, give it, well, I'm, I'm going to give it everything, you know what I mean? But yeah. like, you know, to, to not do it in such a way that I'm going to have nothing left for the rest of the tour, you know, so it's going to be difficult to try and control myself because it's a very, like Earl said, it's pretty unrelenting that one. It just, and you know, like you said as I, well, I, it I makes you want to go. Vocal cords every single night. You'll what? Massage your vocal cords. Oh, cord. thank you. Thank you, you will be fine. I'll be fine. Get you a, get you a little uh, heat bag to wrap around your neck. <laughs> 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 we'll pioneer a new vocal, look, looking after your vocal techniques. Some technology, yeah. yeah. I need it. Film it for YouTube, <laughs> see how many views you get. You could be like the new science. You know. Yeah. Well, we will be the new science, yeah. <laughs> so there I, is a name to the band. <laughs> yeah, I think that... Technology. Lam Lam Madras, every 
evening, <laughs> it'll be fine. Yeah. Paul and Madras better the vocal. I the think. spice will keep me going. <laughs> the pain will already be there, won't it? In your throat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it'll be. Angry. Thing. Yeah. Hey, yeah. There you go. <laughs> so speaking of difficulties, which song, if any, on the album was the hardest to get over the line? You know, to to get it finished. Uh, Only when it comes. When yeah, when it comes, one. probably. Yeah. Yeah. It, I remember the because um, Earl had written the the start of it that really sort of quite you know uh, impactful like metal y type it, it, it reminds me of like Trypticon or something I love the yeah. intro to that one um, so we, we, yeah, we, yeah we had oh. so good yeah we, we, we had that for ages and sort of like two thirds of it done and we just couldn't figure out how to finish it for ages um, and it just happened again like most things do with this band like very naturally at one practice oh, we, oh, just, yeah. and, and we were just like it happened it. yeah yeah, it was sick. It was yeah. very cool. Just clicked. Like, Good moment. I mean, we could, like carry on doing the ba 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 ba, and yeah. then we're just, right. That's it. Go go go. Yeah, and we just it kept was... playing it after like over and over again that breakdown. But um, yeah, that was yeah. dope. That one that probably was... took the longest. Yeah. See, so, yeah, at this point, the other two from the ADK channel, they always tease me because they always mention Celtic Frost, and you've mentioned Trypticon. So yeah. Andy and Dave. I didn't even need to bring up Tom G. Warren. <laughs> Trip well, well, came up because James is a big fan of their music. So, well, wait, wait, the, uh, well what's the the album that we love, the Celtic Frost one? Uh, Monitors. Yeah, that's the oh, one. Yeah. We, we, How fucking heavy is that album? Yeah, it's I, like, I think I think, I think it's my favorite metal album. I think to be honest, it's unreal. It's not normally my sort of thing, but I remember Ed played it when we were driving to uh, Manchester on the Snake Pass once, and it was all misty and stuff, and we misty were just like. Jesus Christ, what is this? It was like the perfect soundtrack of it. It sounded like we were going into battle. It was oh, so good. So and then obviously found trips gone through through listening to that record and stuff, which is uh, yeah. The greatest comeback metal album of all time, I call Monotheist. But you know, after so oh, many yeah. years away. Yeah, it's great. Just come back with a sound like that. It's absolutely mad. Yeah. What's the um so let, let's talk about the tour then. So obviously you're supporting your buddies in malevolence. I've yeah. got the dates here, so it's it's February next month, 2024. Yeah, that's near, isn't it? So we've got yeah. Cardiff, Brighton, Wolverhampton, Norwich, Newcastle, Nottingham, Liverpool. Good mid-tier yeah. venues, you know, like the old 2 Academy in Liverpool, KK Steel Mill, because obviously Malevolence are on nuclear blast, aren't they? You know, they're a big they're a big concern now, aren't they? They they, they shift quite a few units. They are. Why is the old Sheffield homecoming show on that? <laughs> Uh, there's no venue a decent size really i don't think i suppose um, the Bill, is that is that only a small venue i don't know the cap in there to be honest but um i, I don't know I, I think perhaps they're saving it for another show yeah. but um be, I, I don't know it, it, it's kind of yeah i'm not really sure on that one i guess it, yeah likely something to do with saving it for maybe an opportunity to do like a big hometown show at some venue that they have in mind um at some point in the future but yeah not sure to be honest yeah but we're playing a lot of places we've never played before as well which is going to be good so look forward to that yeah oh well, you've got nottingham that's only down the road isn't it from you yeah yeah leeds yeah no nothing in scotland that's surprising they've got a bit um, there is edinburgh. edinburgh is the last Ed show oh, okay. last, yeah last show on the tour is edinburgh right okay i must i must only have the incomplete Okay. Uh, right, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. all right. Yeah, it's like it's Stoke, Cardiff, Brighton, Wolverhampton, Colchester, Norwich, Newcastle, Leeds, Nottingham, Liverpool, Edinburgh. Ah, so yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. So I just, I must have had a poster from just slightly before when they announced yeah. those extra dates. Ah, oh, don't worry at all, mate. It's all good. So when when was the last time you were, you toured before? Obviously, you jumped on this one with your buddies in Malevolence. Uh. Probably with them as well, weren't it, James? I mean, it wasn't yeah. even a four. It was like a four-day, weren't it, or something? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, well, I think just before... Oh, the, after, the last one we did was the guilt trip one that was like, yeah, four dates, and then right, probably man. six yeah. months before that we did another... Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. It was like that, April 2021 we did the guilt trip one, and then maybe December, the previous December, we did similar dates with Malevolence, like four. Um but yeah, that's the big tour, basically. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, we, we've had them on actually. I interviewed Jack 
Oh, nice one. Love Jeff. Great guy. What an album yeah. that is. That guilt trip on Severance. We had it in our top 50 albums of 2023. Yeah. That yeah. Was Very cool. To see you guys on the same bill. So what 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 what's the fav what do you what do you two like the most about touring other than playing the live shows? Uh in the past, I don't know if it'll be different now, but I think in the past it's been like the complete uh sense of like no, sort of no worries, you know. Um, you know, I don't know if it'll be different now. I'm a little bit older, but I think in the past it's sort of been quite an escape like and i feel a bit more a bit detached from reality and it's like a nice in a nice way um you know you're away from like certain responsibilities that might tie you down to some degree um it's just a nice way to step away um from yeah from reality really and just sort of like do your own thing and you you know it's and you know if you break it down on a more uh on a simpler level, it's it's just incredible to be able to do what what we love on, on the scale that we're that we're given the opportunity to do it on, you know. And um, you know, it's just yeah, it's just really humbling experience, and it's just like like I, I'm already thinking like about how I'm going to feel after the tour, about how how nice it's going to be to like I've, I've done the tour and, and take all the positives from it you know it's gonna it's like a real nice um wholesome thing you know yeah james what about you yeah I, i'd agree i think it's gonna be a little escape i think you know Earl knows very well that i've been quite anxious about this in the sort of build up to it but i think now it's like um you know just over a week away i do feel a bit calmer now that we've got everything sorted and it's more just excitement now so um yeah, like I said earlier, just, I, I just like seeing new places, you know, even though it's just, it's still the UK, there's still quite a few cities that I've not been to. Um, so looking forward to having a little mooch around there. Um, seeing the reaction for Malevolence as well is going to be a really cool thing. You know, we've been, we've grown up watching him. Um, yeah, you know, I was listening so. to him today thinking about that. Like, I keep yeah. forgetting to watch Malev every night and so. that's always, uh, always incredible. Yeah. And they always bring something new to the show and stuff, so... Mm. that'll be cool yeah and just screen. looking forward to hanging out with them as well like you know we're just gonna yeah. feel like old times you know um not that we don't see them enough when we're at home and stuff but just to be out with them is going to be a real uh pleasure so yeah it's gonna yeah. be a good time i think like ewan's coming to do merch as well so that'll be sick yeah what, but, one of their really good friends that we love a lot is that does merch for him and he's he's a really good guy so looking forward to hanging out with you and yeah big up you would yeah, big up you and Clark. Shouts out to you and Clark. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> sounds like he's. A, I need to meet him. This legend, you know, this, this great guy of the scene. Ah, oh, you'll love it. If, if, if you go to my left show, it'll probably be doing merch. So yeah. just shout you in, and if you look out for the guy with big tabs. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ewan. how long have you known them then? Did you do you even know them before they formed Malevolence, or do you know them through? We knew them them? like at the start of Malevolence. Yeah. We actually bumped into them on a, so we 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 were practicing in the same building as they were, and I, and I think that me or me and James were planning on going to watch Malevolence at West Street Live, this small venue in Sheffield, um, and I just like downloaded the demo or something and like just started listening to it, and then we bumped into them on the stairs. Like yeah. outside the toilets, and um, just got chatting, and I think like we might have just like popped into their room and just like obviously we were both similar ages and played metal and stuff, and it always um, it always makes me laugh because Charlie went back into their room and went fucking hell, lads, you never guess who like there's some lads downstairs they know who we are and yeah. they're all fucking <laughs> <laughs> yeah this was like 2010 wasn't it yeah con, yeah con was doing vocals it was before alex was in the band and stuff right. yeah, yeah that's right time ago yeah they had another guitarist uh matt and um yeah i just think that's amazing like you know just yeah. and you know don't have good yeah you know, they didn't have, didn't have a clue what was going to um yeah lay before them but i always fucking knew they were going to be massive save it you know yeah and respect to them, you know, for what they've done. Certainly for um, the UK hardcore scene, 
you know, with M M V Limited, yeah. I think you pronounce yeah. it, wouldn't you? I don't know if it's a play on malevolence. Yeah. M L V L T D. Yeah, that's yeah. the one. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. with you and uh Guilt Trip as well, spearheading that. Yeah. The yeah. real scene developing there. There always was for obviously now that I've from what you've been talking about anyway. Yeah. You know, it's it's official, isn't it? You know, for those of us outside of Yorkshire yeah. or that part it's of the north of England. It's yeah. We know it's that cool. there's actually a you know a label behind it, and it's like a family. Yeah. I always think it literally is, and it's really cool that you know other people notice and recognise it for what it is, and um, you know, looking forward to see what it ends up becoming in the future because it'll only get bigger and better. That leads in. I've got two more questions then, especially the the last one, which um, I think we'll get a positive answer now just from that hint from what you said. But so, the first one, I always like to ask about, because I'm not a musician, what will you be doing this year besides touring to make sure Faith in Vain does not slip out of, you know, people's consciousness? What can you do to keep it out there, the album, for people to be talking about it and wanting to listen to it? Uh, Good question. Uh, um, my first reaction was just to say, write more music. <laughs> To, to not yeah. all, you know not I guess that doesn't really mean that the record will kind of stay in the focus but we will I guess as a band you know I, I hope that it's it's one that kind of puts us on the radar of some people who might not have heard us before um, and I think we've all been talking together and we're just the fires you know burning and we just want to keep writing music now but um, yeah I, I just just keep playing as much as we can keep playing these new songs live as well like we said earlier it's the first time we're going to be playing them um next week so we're very excited to do that and just see how well they go over yeah so yeah it's gonna be an exciting year i think yeah absolutely pretty much same as what james said but again there's the level of just kind of doing what we've always done and just doing our thing in it and like and that's what we want to do and that's what we'll continue to do and uh but yeah i think that like you know we've definitely got a bit of a fire up our asses now so we'll be writing you know we have we are on with writing music and I think that we'll try and put together something fairly quickly and just keep that momentum going. I think Definitely. momentum is uh, the key word here. Yeah. That's the irony, isn't it? <clears throat> the older you get, you're probably going to be more productive. Yeah. We've yeah, said well, so well. yeah. Just, well, we say so. that, don't we? Like, we're the busiest we've ever been in our social lives and just in general. And now it's... We, now we're actually the busiest we've ever been band wise so it's chaos to be honest but it's sound we you know we, we all get it done and we love doing it it's just funny yeah <laughs> it's just, it, it kind of sums up to be honest we're just like oh yeah all right yeah. yeah it's quite ironic really but i mean we're rolling with it we're not complaining so nah not at all it's, yeah. it's, it's crack on isn't it yeah. you've answered the last question which was <clears throat> what assurances can you give people that the rough justice sophomore album will be ready in less than a decade. <laughs> <laughs> none. <laughs> yeah, not like any all about positivity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I don't know what the next release will be. I don't know if it'll be a record or something. But, it'll be a you know, country record. Yeah, uh, it'll be uh, um, probably yeah. country record. <laughs> a shift in direction from us with lots of kazoo on it um, <laughs> and animal noises. Yeah, I've been practicing my cow quite a lot, so yeah, I think we're. Uh, <laughs> Oh, you could you could go you know on <clears throat> some of Sheffield's great artists from the eighties, the Human League, Thomas, oh, yeah. bands like that. There we go, yeah. Get the synths involved, Plen yeah. yeah. Plenty of people to rip off, bro. We could, you know. <laughs> yeah. just in Sheffield alone. Just go for yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, but I, I think, well, yeah, I, I think people will probably hear something, um, you know, pretty soon. You know, whether it's a full another yeah. full length or what, but we, we just. We're really yeah. keen to, to keep this going. As you said, momentum is that key word. And, uh, yeah. yeah, We've got stuff cooking in it and it, and it won't Super be inspired. Long. Yeah. A minute. yeah. Excellent. Well, thanks for joining us. The great thing is I've learned a lot more about the band. And what really inspires me is that we've got a band like Rough Justice. You two went to primary school together and have known each other since the age of four. That is just, that's just incredible. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, that you've got love. great friends creating art and you just do it at your own pace and now it's it's bearing a bit of fruit isn't it because you've got your album out so yeah phenomenal it's, story 
yeah and it's, it's nice you know that that, um, that keeps us going as well people noticing stuff so appreciate you for you know yeah. taking the interest and stuff and your time and or, stuff so yeah. it's really nice or your kind words and it's really mm-hmm. been really nice to hear your take on it and uh and what for you've sure. noticed about the songs and stuff so you know really appreciate it yeah you're welcome so i just want to say to the viewers then so the album is called faith in vain and it came out on the 12th of january is there a is the vinyl version ready as well now it's um you, you can pre-order it it is it is on its way um yeah. i believe uh, obviously i'm not sure when this will come out but i believe it should be dropping it at, it should be with us at the end of the week so uh for everyone that's ordered it um it's coming but uh yeah you can pre-order it cd as well i assume yeah we've got yes. cds gotta have the cds yeah. and obviously you can stream it on all the major platforms but go and buy it if you can go and buy a physical product and pick up some merch and uh go over to the facebook page and have a look at the tour dates in february supporting malevolence who's the other band sorry that's on the bill with you pain of truth from pain america of truth. If I, from your New York, James. Yeah, Long Island. Ooh, so you've got a, you've got an NY hardcore band coming out as well. Yeah, that's serious, good man. Yeah, I recommend you check their latest record out. Came out last year. It's really, really good. Yeah, well, it's dude. hard as fuck. Sounds good. That's a good endorsement. <laughs> 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 that's what you want from a metallic hardcore album, isn't it? You know, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, thanks very much for joining us. And, no uh, worry. Look forward to uh, speaking to you again, and hopefully trying to catch one of these shows. Yeah, yeah. nice one, man. Thanks, nice guys. Off.